Tori and I just read Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie. I listened to the audiobook done by LibriVox which is kind of a free um, volunteer organization. People read open source books and they're available for anyone to listen to. So I listened to it and kind of like each chapter was read by a different person. So I'd never read Peter Pan before but I have seen lots of adaptations when I was little, I used to love watching the Mary Martin version that they recently just remade a few years ago and showed it as um, the live Peter Pan event. So it's that same story. I've seen the Disney one, which the animated one, which is actually my least favorite version. I've seen the one from the early 2000s that's very magical and fun. I've seen that one. Um, I've seen Hook, which is kind of like an unofficial sequel to a Peter Pan movie that never existed. And then I've seen um, like parodies of it and stuff, you know, on Once Upon a Time they did a whole Peter Pan season and they've done different things. So I'm very familiar with the story, but I have never actually read Peter Pan before. I recently read the Victorian fairy tale book and that had um, an excerpt from Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens, which is like a prequel. So I knew that little bit going into it but I'd never read it before. So I thought it was very interesting. It made me think a lot and I have to say I feel like it's just not for me. There were a lot of things I didn't quite understand about it and a lot of things that kind of annoyed me. So I'm going to start talking about that. So um, if you don't want to hear spoilers, go read it and then come back. Okay, so first of all, Peter Pan the character is a terrible, obnoxious person with very few redeeming qualities and I did not like him at all and that made it very hard for me to like his story. I was surprised but actually my favorite parts of the story were the parts that took place at the very end and the very beginning when the children were still in England and dealing with their mother and father. Based on all the adaptations I've seen, you know, they usually make the father out to be this horrible person, you know, and he's the one who threw Nana out and he's not very nice, but he was so much fun. He'd play with the kids. He did throw Nana out because he was being kind of childlike himself and throwing a bit of a tantrum, but he refused to take his medicine and he would play with the children and I loved his character. I loved how at the end, um, you know, we find out that the whole time the children have been gone, he's been actually living in the doghouse as kind of a penance for it. And it's so great. His wife says, are you sure it's really a punishment? Are you sure you're not enjoying it just a little bit? And he says, no, no, it's definitely a punishment. But he is absolutely enjoying it. And that's just so hilarious. And then Nana was great. I loved her, um, like the image of her um, taking care of the children and walking down the street with them and just, it was just so much fun. <laughs> so for the parts that took place in Neverland and once Peter gets there, all that stuff, I figured you are either supposed to look at it as like something that actually happened and this is a fantasy story or it's supposed to be some kind of a metaphor for childhood's innocence or something. So if it's literal, then it's kind of bleak and creepy. The Lost Boys are separated from their parents. I guess they fall out of their strollers or something. And then they're constantly dying. They talk about them like dying off in all these battles, which seems not great. And they would talk about um, sometimes there wouldn't be any food because Peter imagined there was food. And it just seemed like kind of bleak conditions. And some things were very imaginative. There were some things that I really liked a lot, like the um, trees, every boy having his own tree to slide down and they had the pressure just right so that he could pop back up or something. And I thought that was really cute. And so if you see it as a literal thing, then Peter is just this kind of awful child who has this sort of cult following and they go have adventures. If you see it as a metaphor, then I guess Peter Pan is a metaphor for like, your youngest self or like your id, your inner uncensored self, which I guess means that children aren't very nice or people are naturally really selfish unless they try not to be or people are inherently cruel, I guess. Those kind of be the messages they're trying to get across here with Peter and his kind of mean character. They also make it clear that Neverland is a place that children kind of have dreamed of and it has elements of every different child's dreams in it and I guess that means then 
that, you know, um, dreams are great when you're like thinking them up, but you wouldn't want them to actually come true because the reality can be a bit frightening. And so, you know, they did a good job of getting that message across. And then I guess at the end, you know, um, there was the whole part where Peter Pan was supposed to come get Wendy for the spring cleaning. And he did, but then he didn't really remember her, and then he forgot a year, and then he did it again. Um, he came and got her another year later, but then he kept forgetting. And I think that was supposed to be kind of like a metaphor for, you know, you can kind of, as you grow up, you can kind of slip back into childhood uh, for a little while, but it gets harder and harder, and eventually you won't get to have any part of you that's a kid anymore. You'll be an adult. And I could see that as being a message they were trying to deliver. So this book has a lot to say about women and about mothers. They did try to get the message across, you know, that the children's mother would always leave the window open for them and she'd always wait for them and they were trying to say your parents will always forgive you no matter what you do. And so that was a very nice message to try to give to little children. I didn't like it that Wendy had to be their mother and that was her whole point of going with them. That bothered me and you could say it was just because she was the oldest she had to be a parent and sometimes they called Peter the father but then she was also his mother too so the whole thing was a little just uh. this book was published in 1904 and so that's you know it would have a lot of the Victorian ideals and stuff women are good for being mothers and that's about it as they saw it that lines up with the time it was published I did think it was interesting they talked about at the beginning the kiss in the corner of the mother's mouth that um, none of her family could ever get to and that was just for Peter. And then they talked about Wendy giving Peter the, um, she said, I'd like to give you a kiss and she gave him a thimble and then she said, I'd like to give you a thimble and she gave him a kiss and there was that whole thing. And I was kind of expecting them to do more with it just based on the movies I've seen. Um, one of the adaptations I saw I thought handled that much better than the book actually and based on film adaptations I've seen I was expecting it you know I've kind of gotten this idea about Peter Pan that the point that they're trying to tell children is you know Peter stays a child forever and he gets to have all the good things about childhood but never growing up means he never gets to fall in love and I got that feeling from most of the movie adaptations I've seen so I was really surprised that that didn't I didn't see that anywhere in this book and even though they did the whole thimble kiss thing, they didn't really apply it to that. So I didn't quite know what it was for other than to just be sweet and say, oh, I miss the mother missed a part of her childhood and that's why she saved that kiss for Peter. So that was interesting. And I, I find it interesting that all these different film adaptations took that route when the actual source material didn't. So yeah, I feel like there was a lot I didn't understand about this book and now I'm going to go try to read some literary reviews or something and figure out what the whole point was. But um, I'm glad I read it. I feel more informed about this really kind of famous story now. And yeah, it was an interesting experience. <laughs>